As you sit here today, uh, Lieutenant, do you have an independent recollection of June 11, 2014? Uh, I remember patrolling, taking care of you know the all three officers uh, at that locations during that time. Okay. And um, do you recall? Uh, uh, so, the, um, can you explain for the court uh, the notes section, uh, how you would go about filling in the notes? And what it, that represents on uh, this particular day? For me, I just make sure that I put down the officers where they were located. That way, if anyone said that those officers weren't there, I'd be able to say on my notes that I put them down. When would you normally do that? Um, the note? When would you now normally generate the note, note section? Uh, at the end of my tour, I try to finish with the uh, off duty job. All right, and um, before we move on with respect to your activities on that particular day, with respect to the pay voucher, so, um, what function did is that have for you as a supervisor in terms of you working um, off the employment? Uh, just to, to hand in, uh, make sure I have some type of record to show that I was there. Okay, and let's start with this. You said to hand in. How would you hand in your, your pay voucher? Uh, at that time, if I remember correctly, if, if we handed them in, Either in person or to the, you know some other supervisors handed in to the district. So when you say handed in in person, um, what are you referring to? Uh, at this time, 2014, I was uh, up in internal affairs already, so it was on the same floor as I was, so I was able to hand it in in person. How else could you hand it in if you didn't hand it in? Uh, I think well, every district has a off-duty box. I think they were supposed to put their bill sheets in those boxes. And were you required at that time to have any supervisor sign off on your sheet or anybody to sign off on your sheet? At that time, no. Has that changed? Now, yes, I have to. Then, if you would just look at uh, S12E, um, what is S12E? Um, it's an activity sheet where I put down all the officers who are working on my detail that I checked and where the location was. Okay, and before we get into the specifics of the information on S12E, um, patrol or activity log, as we've been referring to, and I'm going to refer, I'm going to, refer to that. Did you, what was your, um, what, what were you required, if anything, to do with um, your patrol log or activity sheet? Um, write down, uh, put down my name, date, today's date of the job. Uh, and write down all the officers at what time I saw them and at what location. Okay. And uh, after you did that, what would you do with the uh, patrol sheet? Uh, I would staple it at the end of my tour. Yeah. I would uh, make copies and then uh, attach it to my original voucher. With respect to the information you actually placed on your patrol activity sheet, what was your responsibility as a as a police officer, as an employee, as a supervisor, or, uh, supervising all community detail? What was your responsibility with respect to the information that you placed on there? That's the answer, John. I will answer that. Just to make sure that the officers are there, if there was any other uh, assistance needed from my end, for them to make their job a little easier or make traffic easier. What was the responsibility? Um, what was strike that? 
Let's go. Uh, now, if you, if, if you would just pull out S12T and keep in front of you uh, your uh, control sheet, S12B. E and T. T is the roster. Oh, I see. Thank you. First, with respect to um, S12E and evidence. There's a box on your activity sheet that talks about issues or concerns raised by the supervisor. Right. All right. Did you put any? Is that your notation there? Yes, sir. And what did you know? What did you note there with respect to issues or concerns? Judge, I'm just going to lodge an objection at this point. The witness has testified. The first first witness we've had has testified that he has an independent recollection of June 11, 2014. Um, I need to be clear as to what he's independently recalling and what he's recalling based on his paperwork. So I see he has his paperwork in front of him. I mean, if the prosecutor wants to just straighten it out as to what he's recalling independently and what he's recalling from his paperwork, I don't have a problem. But right now, I have an objection to him looking at his paperwork if he's testified to having an independent recollection of June 11th and supervising that day. His paperwork is in evidence, right? It's, it's in evidence. I'm asking him. So, so the paperwork is in evidence at this particular time. I'm asking him, is that his handwriting? That's on, in evidence. Well, that's not the question you're asking. You have to read the issues and the concerns that I'm sustaining the objection. If you have an independent recollection, you don't need the paperwork, correct? Right. right. So put the paperwork Judge, aside. Judge, have on this on this particular issue? Okay. Outside the presence of? Please, um, before you leave, let me just also advise you, there is a sequestration order in place, which means you cannot talk about your testimony to anyone, none of the attorneys, none of the prosecutors. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So why don't you just step outside while I hear this argument? Sure. Thank you very much. I, I just want to I just want to be clear about your um, honor. This S12B is in evidence. So whatever it says in there is it's actually part of the record. And, That's and this witness is at, with respect. It doesn't have to read it though. I could read it with, on my own because it's in evidence. I I understand that, Judge. But he is a witness who is going to testify with respect to this day. I have no problem asking him questions with respect to whether he has an independent recollection. But he already said he does. That doesn't mean he has an independent recollection of everything. I, and, that's, and that's my objection, Judge. I, just so we're clear, I, I don't anticipate he's going to say, I recall specifically at 622 going and checking so and so in his post and he was wearing the shoe. I guess the, question will come, the last question where the objection was raised was, what is written on issues or concerns? So you could ask them, do you recall writing something on issues of concerns? He either has an independent recollection saying, yes, I do recall writing something on issues of concerns on June 11, 2014. Or he's going to say, no, I don't remember what I wrote in that section. And, I, and then you would refresh his recollection using that, that copy. And I actually thought I was asking him whether it was his handwriting as well. No, but the problem is... You had is, asked that before. Yeah, and and Judge he Mike. said, yes, and then you moved on to, you see the issues and concerns raised. Did you write anything in there? And what was it that you wrote? Right. And that's where the objection comes in. Um, it's, only it's only because he said... He testified that he has an independent recollection. That's the only reason. Yeah, and, and my suggestion, Judge, is that he simply asked, do you recall any issues or concerns that particular day? He says, no, I don't recall it. Then you can say, well, if you yeah. need your document to refresh your recollection, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I know the prosecutor knows what he's doing, but in this particular situation where he says he has an independent recollection, he needs to ask him specifically that question so we know what he's independent recalling and what he's relying upon. That's from the only day. reason why. Yeah. Can I just, I, I just want to make sure that we're going to write I heard him say, I, I remember taking care of officers, supervising officers at that time. Now, the question was, you have an independent recollection, and that's what he replied. In his prior statement, he says, um, he asked, you have a recollection of supervising any of these DOD details? He says, recently, no, not recently, but in the past, yes, I have. I, I don't contest that he would remember supervising DOT details. It was uh, a notable in, uh, traffic situation and, and, and so on. However, I'm not sure we have, I, I don't want to sit here and cross-examine the man on, on a mistaken impression that he gave, that he has an independent recollection of what transpired on June 11th. And right now, it appears that that seems to be what uh, the consensus is that he said. And if that's the case, I'd like to confirm it myself before I get cross-examine him, because my suspicion is, well, we'll see how my independent recollection is with that date and other dates when I ask questions. 
All I'm saying is that I don't think he said he had an independent recollection of June 11. Your Honor's notes will govern it. But he says I have to. Judge. You, you are correct. He, but he didn't answer yes or no to the prosecutor's question. It was, what he said is, like, I do recall being out there and supervising and taking care of my um, my guys, his patrolmen. Taking care of all That's what he says, as opposed to saying, no, I don't have an independent, or yes, I have it. He doesn't answer the question exactly, as opposed. Judge, and I think everybody here who has read this discovery understands that also Mr. Scare picks out a, a portion of the of Mr. Uh, Lorenz uh, Tosado's prior statement where he it may indicate that he doesn't have a specific recollection, but he also is in, in that statement also says something that specifically that that indicates that he had at the time a specific recollection of what occurred on this particular day, specifically when he was asked about whether he did the redeployment, and this is what we're getting into, Judge, whether he did the redeployment on the notes here, that he indicated that it was Captain Askell, his information was that it was Captain Askell who did the redeployment. But the and that's all I'm getting into. I understand that. The objection is not to that. It's really just the one form. Form. Because of the way your witness is answering the question, that he has either an so independent much. recollection of everything that happened, and therefore he, his memory is... Fantastic. Yeah. He never said he had an independent recollection of everything that happened that day. All he said, as Your Honor recalled, was that he remembers being out there supervising. Yes. But you asked him, do you have an independent recollection of June 11, 2014? And he says, I recall being working and taking care of my boss. So I don't know if that's a yes or if it's a no. So we're here arguing so over whether he So what you're going to do, I strongly advise, is why don't you specifically ask him, does he have an interview where he's able to not use any of these documents because his memory is fantastic as to what occurred on the 11th of which I don't think so, I hope not. And then he is going to need guidance and use these documents. It's, it's just the way he answered that particular question, because I'm not sure if he has an independent recollection or doesn't have, because he didn't really answer your question. And what I was asking you to do is actually look at something that is in evidence in this case and then ask him questions about that. That's all I was asking him to do. I so the idea that the form is it's off on that, when it's actually in evidence, this isn't something, Judge, that I'm asking him to refresh his recollection. But this, he, that's not in evidence. So this is actually question. in evidence. I think, I think, I think you're anything. missing the point, respectfully. It's not so much, you can't have him read from something if he's already said, I have an independent recollection of that date. If, if you clarify, what do you specifically recall about that date? He says, I recall one thing. I submit to you, yes, Judge, that Mr. Garrigan is incorrect, that if it's in evidence, then I can ask him to read it. Yes. It's like it's like how many times did they ask people to read the MOU in evidence? And, and read it out loud and read it into the record when it's already been in the record to, to phrase a question. That's simply what I'm doing here. This is something that's actually in evidence, and that's yeah, that's what I wanted to be see, heard. We're on. entitled to know. We're entitled to know what he's independently recalling and what he's recalling based upon his paper. Well, isn't that what cross examination is for, Your Honor? Honestly, I mean. But no, no, no. But really, when it comes down to when it's already in evidence, I could read it on my own. Quite frankly, and you could still argue it in cross examination. Judge, look at this date. Show me the form. Whatever, and you could repeat it two or three times if you so choose. But it's really what it comes down to is cumulative. I don't need the testimony to be cumulative again when it's already in evidence. It's, there's two separate things that's being argued. What the defense is arguing is with regard to the form of the question as to his answer having this independent recollection that he doesn't need any guidance, any um, documents to assist him in his testimony um, versus what you're arguing, which is separately than what the defense's objection is, you're arguing it's a judge, it's an evidence, he could, he could be anything's in evidence, but he can, but for judicial economy and for cumulative, I don't know, really, I could read it on my own. How it's been used with all the other witnesses previously is, because none of them had an independent recollection, that it was used as a guide in their testimony to refresh their memory, going along with all of your questions. This guy answered, this witness, excuse me, this lieutenant, um, answered differently. What I strongly suggest is bring him back in here and just ask him, it's like, so are you saying that you have an independent recollection specifically without using any of this information that you would remember? Who were the officers? Where were they on post? What did you specifically write as to issues without looking at any documents? 
if he says yes, then you would not use the documents to I'll ask the question. So if he that. says no, I would need some guidance. I'm only going to um, counsel Mr. Skierra's argument that he only has an independent recollection of working that day and that he took care of his guys going around the post. And that was his only independent recollection. Because he didn't really answer your question, quite frankly, this poor client. My officer will bring in the lieutenant, please, back in. Go ahead, prosecutor. I want to ask you, Lieutenant, you had indicated, straight that, explain for the court the extent to which you have an independent um, recollection of the events on June 11, 2014. What do you remember independently without referring to your, um, to your, to, to the paperwork in front of you? That's in evidence. Uh, I recall working that day and supervisors, uh, supervising officers on the Pulaski Skyway DOT detail. Do you remember the officers that you supervised? Um, if I was to say uh, yes, I can probably remember who by face, not by name. I say they were there. <coughs> okay. uh, based on, on my paperwork also, if I tell you, if I wrote down my paperwork that they were there, they were there. Well, right now what we're, what we're inquiring about is just what you remember without looking at your paperwork. Would you remember who was at Brandon Center and what time you um, may or may not have booked that person? Do you remember that without looking at your paperwork? At that moment, at this moment. No. All right. All right. So based upon that testimony, I do not find that he has an independent recollection specifically as to that date. Just um, generally being out there, working the post, and taking care of his men that were assigned to him on that day. So with that do being it, you can move on and asking him specifically as to S12E. Without looking at your paperwork, do you remember whether any officers were redeployed that day? That day? Uh, I have to say no. Okay. Do you remember, without looking at your paperwork or refreshing your recollection, do you remember if officers were um, do you remember, if you strike that, without looking at any of your paperwork, do you remember whether you were the person who, who redeployed officers on that, on that particular day? That day, no. So you would need to refresh your recollection? Yes, sir. With respect to S12E, if you could read the issues to yourself, and then I want to ask you a question specifically about um, the writing and if, it's that, if that's your writing. Just read it to yourself. First, though, with respect to the handwriting, is that your handwriting? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, with respect to um, uh, the next question, does that refresh your recollection about the posts um, which were um, reassigned? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you have an independent recollection, as you sit here today, of um, how it, it, whether you redeployed those officers? I redeployed, yes, sir. You redeployed them? Those, yes, sir. Okay. And um, uh, with respect to, um, let's go through, now I'm going to ask you to, referring to S12E and S12T. You had testified that uh, S12T, you would get the uh, portion of that uh, text to you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And then it would be your responsibility to go out to the post. Yes, sir. All right. Looking at S12T, um, for the center and brook uh, location, mm -hmm. who did you expect to see at center and brook? According to S12T. Uh, Officer Silsky. All right. Do you know Officer Silsky? Uh, personally, no, but I know him by face. You know him by face? Okay. And. Um, Now, do you have an independent recollection of where Officer Silsky was that day, if anywhere, without looking at your paperwork? I don't know. Okay. I would ask you to look at S12E and um, see if you saw Officer Silsky anywhere. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. According to your paperwork, now, do you have an independent recollection of where you saw? Uh, without no. looking at your paperwork? No. All right. Now, look at your paperwork. Does that refresh your recollection about where you saw? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, where did you see Officer Silsky that day? 
uh, at 6.28 in the morning uh, to our Med Center in Brooklyn. Okay. Um, and so, is that where you expected to see Officer Sielski at 6.22 in the morning? In the morning, yes. Okay. And is that based upon S12T? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, did you see Officer Sielski anywhere else that day? <coughs> yes, sir. Okay. Where did you see him? Uh, I had redeployed him at a different post where manpower was needed. What time did you, uh, what were the two times that you booked in Officer Sielski? <coughs> According to my, <coughs> excuse me. According to my paperwork, I put them at a 6:28, and again down at 8:17. Okay, and now you, I use the word booking, and you repeated it. What does it mean for you to book in an officer at a post? Uh, to make sure that the officer is at that, like logging in, making sure that he or she is at that location. So if you could just, let me just, since we're going through, we'll go through one at a time. There's a group of pay vouchers that have been marked as S12 in that subfolder, specifically S12I. You see S12I, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. All right. What is S12I? <coughs> An off duty paid voucher for uh, Officer Sielski. All right, and Officer Sielski, um, is that with respect to the information on the to be completed by the officer requesting off duty employment, is that your handwriting there? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, um, and okay. with respect to the detailed project and location, what did Officer Sielski indicate? Uh, he put down DOT, Pulaski Skyway Center. And location center and poultry. And with respect to the notes section, is there a signature there? Yes, sir. Is that your signature? Yes, sir. And what does that, is, when you affix that signature to that pay voucher, um, what did that mean to you? Uh, just to show for me that I checked him and made sure that he was at his location. And he's on your on your patrol sheet. You have two um, two locations for Officer Shields. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. And on the pay voucher, there's only one. Yes. Sir. In your mind, based upon your understanding of the policies and the, the, the policies and procedures and the requirements as a supervisor, do you have an issue with the fact that there's only one location? Uh, no. And why is that? Uh, that's his original post that he was assigned to. Okay, so um, the court, back to S12T. Um, according to S12T, um, who did you expect to see at Skyway 28 Center and Bright? Center and Bright, Skyway 12, uh, Office of Pescatory. All right, and that's um, Skyway Post 28? Yeah, correct, sir. And um, according to your patrol sheet, who did you, uh, did you see um, Officer Pescatore anywhere? Uh, besides that location, yes sir. Well, first with respect to that location. Oh, yes, she was there. She was where? Uh, uh, Santa and Bright. All right. And then, um, do you have an independent recollection again of redeploying uh, or some, uh, Officer Pescatore being redeployed? No, based on, only based on my paper. Only based on the paper. Okay, and the paperwork, is that your handwriting says redeployed to Columbus and Manor? Yes, sir. And that's the same thing for Officer Seals, is that correct? <coughs> yes, sir. And um, do you know Officer Pescatore? I think I asked you this, but... Uh, not personally, but yes, I, I know her. Yeah, and I guess I'm going to ask these questions. I'll ask a better question. Do you re would you recognize Officer Pescatore? Yes, sir. And did you see Officer Pescatore anywhere else that day, according to your paperwork? Yes, sir. Where? Uh, Columbus and Maryland. At what time did you see Officer, according to your paperwork, what time did you see Officer Pescatore? At 8.17 in the morning. And I want to ask you to take a look at S12J.
Yes, sir. What is S12J? <coughs> off duty pay voucher for uh, officer of pescatory. And um, is your signature affixed anywhere on that? Yes, at the bottom where the notes are. And if you, can you explain for the court why you signed these in the notes section? Um, that was my, I do it personally just on the notes section because anywhere else it just says foreman authorized. I'm not the foreman for the DOT section, so I just put it down in a notes section. You know Officer Michael Mayetti? Yes, I would recognize him. You would recognize Officer Mayetti? Um, do you, as you sit here today without looking at your paperwork, do you have an independent recollection of seeing uh, Michael Mayetti out on uh, working at DOT detail on June 11th of 2014? No. All right. According to your paperwork, did you see Mike Mayetti um, out there on June 11th, 2014? No. Is that 12A? <coughs> off duty pay voucher for uh, Officer Michael Mayetti. And is that, that's, is that your signature under the foreman authorized agent section? No. Okay. Um, can you read the foreman authorized agent that's written there? Uh, it says Captain J. Askins. Okay. Do you know Captain J. Askins? Yes, sir. Right. Um, and how well do you know Captain Joseph Askins? We work together. And um, with respect to the Skyway detail, you worked as a supervisor at the Skyway detail. Yes, sir. What was Captain Ascolise's responsibilities, if you know, with respect to um, the Skyway detail? Uh, just knowing that he was the one in charge. He was in charge. Okay. Um, and do you have a recollection of him actually being in charge and, and interacting with him in the context of the Skyway detail? Uh, yes, okay, John. Okay, I'm sorry, couldn't you yes. 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 Do you have any recollection of him um, ever taking any direct action on its on a uh, uh, post that you supervise? That I supervise, not at the moment. Not, not at the moment. Just one last question: the uh, S12A, uh, the location that um, Michael Mayetti put in for, or the pay voucher indicates Grand, New Jersey. Yes, it says Grand Street, New Jersey, and uh, on June 11th. Uh, yes, 6 to 11, 14. From 6 to 10? To 10, that's correct, sir. Is that a post that you were responsible for supervising? Yes, sir. Uh, and is that a post that you went to on that on that particular day based upon your the paperwork to S12B? Yes, sir. And according to S12B, mm -hmm. how many times did you go to Grand New Jersey that day? Uh, at least twice. Did you, you recall ever seeing Michael May anyway? No, sir. Uh, Lieutenant, now, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Take a look at S12T. That's the uh, the uh, master list, I think we call it, the daily roster, one or the other. You're familiar with that, right? Okay, yes, sir. And you would get those in advance, correct? Yes, sir. And um, you were asked about S12A. What address does um, my heading list? Uh, his pay voucher says Grand Street in Jersey. Okay, Grand Street in Jersey. Now. To be clear, may I approach you? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Grand Street in Jersey, there are empty um, posts listed on this, this uh, daily roster, correct? Uh, yes, sir. There are daily, but there's like, uh, I think there's five of them on there, correct? Six. Six empty posts. But on this particular day, that post was filled. Grand Street in Jersey was filled according to the daily roster, correct? Uh, yes. Grand Street in Jersey has two more posts. I, where's Williams? Grand Street in Jersey, Skyway right. 33, so, Skyway 34 point. So, Grand Street in Jersey already has a human being there. There are posts with no persons listed at all, correct? Yes, sir. All right. But the records you have in front of you, the records you have in front of you, indicate that Mayetti put down a post that somebody else was already scheduled on the record well in advance when this voucher went out, when this uh, master log went out, correct? Correct. Okay, and that was produced long before the actual day of the proceeding, uh, the actual day of the um, uh, uh, of the tour, correct? How much in advance, I don't know. Okay, either way it came to you in advance of, of the tour that day, correct? The day before I would say yes. Okay, um, next question. Um, 
I, I just want to clarify this independent recollection scenario that you've described here and make sure that I have it straight. Now, um, I'm just going to take this from me from the, on the side for a second, okay? Um, and I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. Now, I recognize that you have an independent recollection of having supervised DOT details, right? Yes. I mean, that was a new scenario uh, in terms of this guy would be closed down, right? And uh, you've worked off duty before, but never a uh, scenario where the sky was closed down, correct? Uh, as off duty, no. Okay. Probably, probably on duty. You know, traffic's happened, accidents happen, and closed down. Right. If there was an issue that involved three years, how long have you been on the job, Jersey? 24 years. Right? 24 years. And um, I grew up in Jersey. I remember the Skyway being there well, when I was when I was coming of age. So that thing has been there since the entirety of your career, correct? Yes. Sir. And so there may have been instances where police response was needed, correct? Yes. Emergencies or stuff like that, correct? I'm not, you remember any of those specifically? Uh, certain dates, no. No, okay. So those just deal with your time as a police officer, correct? Yes, sir. All right, now, and that would be when something occurred that required a police response in the normal course of your police activity, right? Yes, sir. All right. In terms of the Skyway detail, this was the first time that 100 officers plus a day were um, being detailed to try and deal with traffic for this closure of that roadway, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So you have a recollection that this created overtime opportunities for supervisors, correct? Not overtime, uh, off-duty paid, didn't my, pay. My yeah. apologies. I have a horrible tendency to, 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 to commingle the two. That's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Well, if you want to count Keep them going, because I make a thousand. But anyway, regardless, there were off-duty opportunities, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And the off-duty opportunities came in the form of supervising these various um, districts uh, where they had various posts related to traffic they were expecting as a result of the Skyway closure, correct? That's what they said, yes. All right. And so you have an independent recollection insofar as you supervise some of those, correct? Yes, sir. You remember how many you supervised between... April and September of 2014. I have to say no at this moment. You don't know. You don't remember. You remember um, what officers you supervised during that period of time? At this moment, no. No. Okay. Do uh, you remember what addresses or what intersections you went and supervised various officers at during that period of time? In fact, fair to say that over 24 years on the job, there may be a couple police responses or instances, maybe a handful that you remember because it was something graphic or it was something uh, that really stands out in your career. But by and large, would you agree that your recollection of events is based upon paperwork and records that you or other officers create uh, to uh, in furtherance of the law enforcement mission? Yes. Okay. And so you've, it, you've done police <coughs> reports. In your, in your career, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, response to a call, observance of criminal activity, uh, a public safety issue. You've done police reports to detail what transpired on a given day, correct? Yes, sir. Right. And those, after the fact, have become kind of like your recollection uh, of the events in question based upon some questioning you may get in a criminal proceeding, in a civil proceeding, in a juvenile proceeding, whatever it may be, right? Right. right. And had you not filled in those reports all those years, you'd have a problem remembering one job from the next, except on those exceptional circumstances, right? right. And so in terms of Skyway details, in terms of having done the supervisory jobs, is it fair to say that without the paperwork, you can't specifically recall anything that transpired with regard to those matters? Yes. Yes, okay. And that's all I'm trying to be fair. Okay. All right. But you said that um, you, I want to make sure I'm clear on this, you had a recollection of moving officers Sielski and Pescator from their post to a different post. 
Do you recall that? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'm going to try and drill down on this a little bit, but I'm going to ask you what your function was as you moved from, when you went out and supervised these locations, what was your function? Uh, to make sure that they were at their location, directing traffic if necessary. Okay. Would you, um, when you say if necessary, there was a lot of traffic, right? On this? Certain locations. Okay, sometimes they didn't have to direct traffic? Yes. Okay. Um, and would you go through the entire district that was assigned to you? To the locations, yes. Yeah. Would you um, note uh, unmanned posts? Unmanned posts? In my notes, I, I didn't put them down. No. You did? Okay. Well, um, take a look at your, go back to that document, uh, the, the, the folder marked June 11th, if you would. And look at um, S12E. May I again, Your Honor? Yeah. All right, and, and Lieutenant, if I get too close, let me know, all right? I think this is the one we have here. S12E, your, your um, activity log slash patrol uh, log, all right? The, you list times, names, and locations here, correct? And, and you have details on one thing, I'm going to get to that shortly. How, so the first one you have is 622 Brandon Center. See that? On your, on S12E, do you see that? Yes, sir. You, okay, I'm sorry, I, 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 does everybody can hear you, I just want to make sure. Yes, yes right? sir. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Good catch. Um, now, tell me about uh, Grand and Marin. Who was there? Grand and Marin. I listed on my sheet. Okay, well, who was that? When you say not listed on your sheet, you're referring to S12E, correct? Yes, ma'am. The activity log? Yes, Your Honor, I'm sorry, thank you. That's what looking at. S12E, Grand Marin's not on your sheet, correct? Right. right. All right. Well, did you drive past there? Yes, sir. Did you see anybody there? Not based on my sheet. Not based on your sheet. But, um, and in fact, if we look at the Pulaski Skyway detail, S12T, no one's at Grand and Marin on this sheet either, correct? Right. All right. Um, and if we look at Grand and Washington, is that listed on your sheet? No, sir. No? No, sir. Okay. And if we look at S12, that, so on S12E, it's not listed, and on S12T, it's listed as empty, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, did you drive past that and see no one was there? Yes, sir. Did you did you note that? Yeah, I note that. Oh. <laughs> well, how did you come to, 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 to learn then that no one was there? I thought I answered your question. I passed by it. So you have an independent recollection of passing by? I, my question, my thing is I passed by every post. You did? Yes. All right, when did you pass by Grand and uh, <coughs> Washington or Grand and Marin? That day during my tour. Oh, no, no. You have time specific as to the other post. When did you when did you pass by those? Objection, Judge. It says an answer. It said yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Answer the question. <clears throat> I passed uh, there during the times of the sale of six hundred hours and ten hundred hours. Okay, so the best you can tell us is you must have passed by at some point because you don't have a specific time on there, correct? That's correct. All right. Now you then indicated that you went at six twenty eight to Center and Brook, and you saw seal speed. That's according to 12E, correct? Correct, sir. And then at 628, the exact same time, you saw Pescatory at Center and Bright. That's correct, sir. Are they, uh, are Center and Brook and Center and Bright at the same intersection? One block away, sir. One block away. So at 628, did you stop and talk to somebody and, and, and um, uh, do anything? Center and Bright, no, sir. No. So, you, did you sign them in? Did you sign their voucher? No, sir. You didn't sign their voucher? Not at 628. How do you know that? 
because I've signed my vouchers and when I see them the second time around. So your you record. Really yeah. yeah. You need some water or something? Go <clears throat> ahead, right, sir. I'm sorry. I can continue. Okay. Um, all right. So it's your testimony that you you signed the vouchers on the second pass through. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, All right. Well, let me show you Sealski's. Take a look at Sealski's voucher. Is that Sealski's voucher? Yes, sir. Does that have your signature? Your signature is on the notes section. You see that? Yes, I'm going to ask you about that in a few minutes. And you signed Sealski's voucher? Yes, sir. At what location? <clears throat> when I redeployed him at Columbus and Maryland. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But that, what, where does it say that he was? My control sheet. No, no. Where does it say he was on his voucher? Look at S-O-I. Center and Brook. Center and Brook, which is what it says on your patrol sheet at 628, correct? Correct. But you just said you didn't sign his thing until after you moved him on the second run through, correct? Correct. So why does it say Center and Brook? Because he was there at his first time when I met him. And that's where the report on. Uh, Wherever you have the sheet, the master log has him located. <clears throat> um, let's see, the original's in here. I, that's my copy. No, no, maybe here. We'll just give you this one. It doesn't matter. I'll give you that. <clears throat> S12T. Yes. Sir. That's where it has him located, but that's not where you have him located when you sign his voucher. Correct? Yes, sir. Why'd you sign a voucher that it, uh, misstates where he's located? So. He's listed on a master sheet in Center and Brook. Uh, okay. The question is, why did you sign a voucher that misstates where he's located? He was at two locations, sir. So it's not a mistake. Ah. He was at both locations. So, to be clear then, it's your understanding that you don't need to have every location someone may be at, correct? Is that your testimony? If you could just be clear about it. Paperwork they referred to. Yeah, we're looking at Silsky's voucher. Talking about the voucher. Yes, sir. Well, I just asked you to be clear about that with respect to that versus the control sheet. Twelve I. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Twelve I has one location, correct? Yes, sir. Your patrol sheet has two locations, correct? Yes, sir. So it's your understanding that if someone moved from location to location, they could. Um, he didn't have to write down a second location, correct? Correct. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, let's just try and figure out a few of these other ones. Ram is 12F. See that? Ram, yes, sir. Okay. Now you have him <coughs> at what? <coughs> Center and Grand. Center and Grand. And you have him again. Uh, that's first on your list and last on your list. And by the way, you understood these numbers not to be officers in their post, but um, each time you went to a place? Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you have Grand and Center, uh, Grand and Center, and the uh, patrol, the uh, detail here has him at Grand and Center, right? Yes, sir. And he's got Grand in York, but he crosses out, a uh, Center in York, and then he crosses out and puts Grand, correct? Okay. Do you know if he was at Center New York and they crossed it out when he got moved to Center Green? He didn't get moved anywhere. That's his location. Okay, so he just wrote the wrong address and, and then crossed it out. Is that what it looks like to you? That's what it looks like to you. All right, but you don't have an independent recollection of that one way or the other, correct? No. No. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Now, here's one that's interesting to me. Um, uh, we have a guy by the name of Baker. Yes, sir. 12 G. Uh, 12 G, Baker. And he says Granite Pacific. And you have a Granite Pacific at 622, and then Granite Pacific at 856. You see that? Yes, sir. But let's go to the master. You said the master's where he was put. Um, 
Where's who's at Brandon Pacific? And the master at that time was Joe King. King. King is not Baker, right? No. Okay, so before you told me that uh, the other guys were on the master at that location, so that's the, the address that they were put there, but I don't have Baker at that location, do I? No. But his voucher and your patrol log differ from the Skyway detail, right? Is that right? Right. Okay. Well, let's sneak a peek here at Joe King. Now, do we see King at the uh, on the on the uh, list here? Yes, sir. And where is King? Brandon Pacific. Brandon Pacific. That's on the uh, 12T, the uh, master list, right? Yes, sir. All right. But you have them where? Joe King, Brandon Mom. Brandon Mom. And um, you have them there two times, correct? Yes, sir. And then he has Brandon something, crosses it out, and then, is that his writing next to Mama? Must be, yes, sir. Must be? You don't know, correct? Yes, sir. You don't know. By the way, is yes, your sir. signature on this page, 12H? Yes, sir. Where? At the bottom of the note section. At the bottom of the note section. What about here, next to, uh, on, uh, by signature, below a form and authorized agent? Is that your signature? No, sir. No. What is the letter saying? 12H. So, you know whose signature that is? No, sir. Did, was somebody else out there supervising that day? No, sir. But you can see the color of the pen looks the same as the one where I already rated it. So, to me, Excuse it looks me, like... Excuse me, what is it? It's like the same color pen from I already rated so you're estimating now that some third party who put hourly rate with the signature changed the document and put Mammoth? Or is that is that your guess? Judge, can I just look at the original? So is that your testimony? One second. That, well, let's be clear. You're asking me if that was my signature. I, that's that's not your signature. So. If we look at this based upon your recollection, which is based upon the document, you sign the bottom, yes, correct? King signs over here, and then some third person, whose information we don't know who they are, changes it to Mammoth and signs something under um, authorized agent, correct? Um, okay, second chance, so. Okay, well. Wow. answer his question. Yeah. You make, he didn't ask you whether you knew the signature, sir. So. Someone put that there. Not Joe King. No, that's not Joe King's signature. Okay, good. So we have a third person taking a voucher on a day uh, in this indictment and writing in a signature that is not either you or Joe King, based upon what you can see here, correct? Yes, now, let's just take a look. We got some more vouchers here. We'll throw them as quick as we can. Now, here's Pescatore then. Now, Pescatore, you have it 628, correct? And Pescatore was at center and right on the master. That's 12T, center and right on the master, right? Yes. Okay. But on, and, Pescator, and, and, and Pescatore's paperwork has Pescatore at center and something crossed out and then Bright, correct? And again, we know Pescatore got moved off of that location, correct? Afterwards, yes. Afterwards. Okay, so uh, this is a scenario where the first location is noted on the, on the voucher, correct? Yes, All right. And when you testified earlier, you said you had an independent recollection of moving uh, those officers, correct? And what observations did you make when you moved those offices? <clears throat> when I went to the location of Columbus and Marin, there was no one there. Okay. And, and, and from living in this city, like everyone knows, Columbus and Marin is a well high traffic location with a lot of pedestrians with the pass station there. Okay. And so you made the decision to move those offices, correct? Yes, sir. Did you give a statement in this case? Statement. A statement to Internal Affairs and the, the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office. 
regarding regarding events of this scenario uh, of this June 11th um, June 11th um, uh, DOT detail. Yes. You did. You recall when that was? No. no. All right. Do you remember who was there? Yes, sir. Who? The attorney in front of me. The attorney in front of you. Who else? Both attorneys, sir. Both attorneys. Okay. So when you say the attorney in front of you, um, we're over well, uh, overloaded with attorneys. The two right in front of you are Mr. Stone and Mr. Cho, right? That is correct. Are those the two you're referring to? Yes, sir. All right. So you met with them? Yes, sir. When? Can, can you estimate the date? All right. Was it in the last three months? Okay. Was it in calendar year 2018? Meaning in the last 10 months? Possibly. Possibly. Can't recall. Okay. Do you re All right. So you met Mr. Stone and Mr. Cho. Do you recall how many meetings you had with how many people from the prosecutor's office at North Jersey City Internal Affairs? Just once. Just one time. And did you give a statement? An official document that I signed, no, sir. Did you give a statement where you answered questions? Yes, sir. You did? I'm sorry, was that a yes? Yes. Yes, you did. Okay. And the, you gave the statement to Mr. Stoma and Mr. Cho, correct? Yes, sir. And you don't recall exactly when that was, right? No, sir. All right. Let's uh, mark this as 71. Oh, I'm sorry, I called it. 80. D8. D8. Uh, okay, Your Honor, I, I, I get the mark of the witness, correct? Just to be clear. Yes, that's fine. Madam Clerk, I'm just going to put D80 on there. All right? For all my identification. All right, let me just distribute these, Your Honor. Okay. Now, is your first name? I'm sorry, you ready, Your Honor? Yeah. Is your first name Lorenzo? Yes, sir. Uh, when did you become a lieutenant? This year, sir. This year? Okay. And before becoming a lieutenant, were you a sergeant? Okay. And for how long were you a sergeant? Uh, was that a sergeant? Uh, since 2012. 2012. All right. So th generally those are dates you recall your promotions within the department, correct? Uh, I try to. Can we? Understood. But you have a recollection of becoming a lieutenant in 2018 and prior to then uh, a sergeant in 2012, correct? Around that time. Give or take. Give or take. I it. it wasn't 2000. And it wasn't 2017, it was around 2012, right? Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked the 8. And I'm going to ask if you've ever been shown that document before. No. Okay. Well, this has been provided to us in discovery by the prosecutor's office. And in fact, this was part of the discovery they use with regard to um, the uh, investigation in this case. Now, you see here it says D80, that's our marking for purposes of the trial. See that? All right, and then it's the state of New Jersey County of Hudson, and then it says in the matter of a certain internal affairs investigation, and it says transcript of the statement of Sergeant Lorenzo Tassado. You know of another Lorenzo Tassado in the police department? No, sir. No, okay. And it says location. Hudson County Prosecutor's Office, Jersey City, New Jersey, January 20th, 2016. See that? Okay. Now, you just testified that you don't recall a second conversation with anybody. There was one conversation it was with Mr. Stoma and Mr. Cho, right? Okay. It says transcript ordered by, and then it's got the Director of Law and Business Operations, HR, Anna Piera, and then it's got the Karen English. She's the transcriber. And I will just tell you that we've been assuming that this was you when we heard the tape and then we got the transcript. And I'd ask you to go to the second page. The second page talks about, uh, it starts with a Detective Cigarelli. Okay, thanks. Detective Cigarelli. 
Okay. Now, and underneath there, if you look down on line eight, it talks about a sergeant, Joshua. I think the, the S is kind of just flows into the J, Joshua. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Now, is that Mr. Stone and Mr. Cho? Yes, sir. No. Okay. Uh, did you talk to them? To these officers, yes, I recall them now. Okay, so let me be clear. You came up to the prosecutor's office and gave a statement to the prosecutor's office on January 20, 2016, and before I showed you the transcript of that, you had no recollection of that ever having happened, correct? No, I, I recall. You recall it now. When I was questioning you a few minutes ago, you had no recollection of it, right? I thought you talked about the attorney. I didn't think you were talking about officers. Oh, so when I asked if you were ever interviewed in this case, you, you remembered this conversation? No. You did. That's my point. I just asked a bunch of questions about who you spoke to. You said you spoke one time, and it was Mr. Stoma and Mr. Cho, correct? Yes, sir. And now I show you a document, which is a transcript. We've gone through it. We've heard voices on there. Uh, and it's a transcript of a statement that uh, has Sergeant Lorenzo Tassada on there from January 20th, 2016. Are, are you telling me you remembered that before when I asked you questions about giving a statement? You were talking about the attorneys, not the... At the detective that was questioning me about the statement. Okay, so did you, were you, did, was this statement in your, in your brain a few minutes ago when I was asking questions about whether or not you gave a statement? No, sir. No, and now it's in your brain because I showed you the paperwork, correct? Yes, sir. And you didn't remember it before, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, that's all. That's it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. There's no crime in not forgetting something. And you had a conversation under oath with investigators from both the prosecutor's office and from the Jersey City Internal Affairs Unit on January 20th, 2016, correct? Yes, and you were called in and asked questions about this DOT detail and some supervising that you did, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, is, your, is your memory being refreshed now with regard to this? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were asked questions about, do you remember the date you were asked questions about? According to the paperwork, it says the 20th. That's the date you were questioned. You were questioned on January 20, 2016, right? I'm asking you now, before we go through the document, if you remember the date in question they were asking you about. About the date in question? Excuse me. No, until they gave me the paperwork. Until they gave you paperwork. So they actually showed you paperwork during the course of this interview, correct? Say yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> In fact, Signorelli starts on page two. Um, I'm Michael Signorelli, Hudson County Prosecutor's Office, line six. And Sergeant Sashworth indicates who he is. He's the Jersey City Police Internal Affairs, correct? Yes, sir. And he would, you were in that unit, correct? Yes, sir. You were in the unit at the time of this statement, right? Yes, sir. Are you still there? Yes, sir. How long have you been in IA? I think I said uh, 2014 is when I got transferred there. 2014, so when you did the DOT details, you were in internal affairs, correct? Okay. And in fact, he says, line 21, well, strike that. Do you recall him telling you you're not a target of anything? Yes, we told you. He told you that, right? And it's right there on, on, on page two, line 21. You recall him telling you this was about the overtime details with the Plasti Skyway? Yeah, he told me about the Skyway detail. Okay. That's uh, page three, line five. And I'm just doing this so that you know I'm not sneaking up on you with anything. Uh, and then um, you recall being placed under oath. Yes, sir. Did you understand what the oath meant? Yes, sir. It meant you were telling the truth, correct? Yes, sir. And it meant that if you're saying anything that was willfully false, that could be a problem for you, correct? Yes, sir. And internal affairs, since 2014, you've taken a bunch of statements, haven't you? Yes, sir. From officers? From officers, yes, sir. Yeah, and they're obligated to tell you the truth, correct? Yes, sir. And you were telling, you were giving your statement to not only the prosecutor's office investigator, but also Jersey City uh, Internal Affairs uh, Sergeant Sasha, correct? No, it's a Hudson County Prosecutor's Investigation. Okay. He was, so, pre he was present in the room, but it's not a Jersey City investigation. Well, did Sasha would ask any questions? I don't recall him answering don't okay. any questions. Okay. But let's just see if we, we're clear on this. 
about what your duties were in the, in the uh, statement. Regarding the DOTB count? Yeah. yeah, right, okay. That would make sense. That's what they were asking me about, right? Now, um, I'd ask you to take a look at um, page Six, line seventeen. Uh, line seventeen. And you're shown a document. I don't have the document attached to the statement, but you're shown a document. Signorelli. And by the way, I'd like you to look through it. Has anybody asked any questions other than Signorelli during the course of this investigation up to that point? Oh. No, sir. <clears throat> so, at page six, Signorelli is showing you a document, correct? Last time we skipped one statement. Now, he shows you a document, and you say, uh, and it's document number two. You recognize the document. You say that's a signature for me to say that I was a supervisor for the off-duty detail for the Plasty Skyway, the officers that I had that day. All right. And at next line, page eighty. So that's your pay voucher. And he says, correct. Now. Let me just make sure we're talking about the same document. Yeah. Unfortunately, everything got blended here. So give me a minute. Yes. It took, it took, it took a ride on me, did No, no, no. Here we go. It's a 12D. So, at that part of the statement, is he questioning you about your pay voucher, Mark 12D? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's the pay voucher that you signed as a supervisor, correct? Yes, sir. And that is your signature on it, correct? Yes, sir. And at the bottom, you mark who you supervise that day, right? Yes, sir. All right. In fact, that Signorelli asked on line 14, okay, all right. And you wrote the post and the officers down in the note section of this voucher. You see that? Yes, sir. And you answer right. Okay, then he says, the next document I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to label number three in the bottom right-hand corner. What is that document? And you answer line 22. That is my, I guess you could say, patrol sheet, just to show that I went to every officer's spot at what time, making sure there was no problems at those locations. Now, having reviewed... The bottom of page seven is he referring to twelve e? Yes, sir. And that's what you're referring to, correct? Yes, sir. Because that's the document that you mark, listing every spot that, um, as indicated here, I went to every officer's spot at what time, making sure there's no problems at those locations, correct? And then uh, Cigarelli asks, okay, now, did you did you make a note in the detail section? Yeah, I'm going to object to the manner in which this witness is being... I'll withdraw the question. A ...prior statement, a hearsay statement. Again, he hasn't been asked whether he recalls or whether he needs it to refresh his recollection, or he hasn't established whether there was any inconsistency simply reading from the out-of-court statement, and it's not permissible under the rules of evidence. Judge, if I may, it's cross-examination, and he, he uh, testified initially uh, that he had one conversation with the prosecutor's office and it was with Mr. Cho, Mr. Stoneman. I had actually shown the statement to confirm the fact that there was a second um, uh, interview that took place back in January of 2016, uh, uh, January 20, 2016, and uh, now I'm going through to make sure, getting to the setup of the question, that we're talking about the same documents because um, 
I have to confirm that the documents that are being uh, discussed in the statement are the ones that were just testified to. For the record, Judge, the documents that are being discussed in the statement have been provided in discovery and have been marked as such with the numbers that correspond to the transcript, number one. Number two, Lieutenant Tosado has already indicated that, yes, he now recalls having been shown the, photo, the, uh, the transcript, the fact that he does recall giving a statement. So the idea that he gets to, that the defense counsel should be able to read a hearsay statement to the record. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Let me ask it this way. Do you recall them asking you about changing officers on the detail, changing their posts? Tell me. If you don't recall, I'll just show it to you. I don't recall. Okay. Let's take a look at the uh -huh. Make sure we're clear. Back to page eight. And we are dealing with um okay now uh, did you uh, at the beginning Signorelli says did you make a note in the detail section for any of the officers there? Just so we, and then just you say at line four, any officers? Oh, here, yeah. There were officers Zelinsky and Pescatori were supposed to be at Center and Brook and Center and Brighton. They were redeployed to Columbus and Mammoth. So, you remember discussing with them the fact that there was a redeployment of officers? Yes. Okay. Now, by the way, January of 2016 was about 20 months, uh, 18 months, 19 months, prior, uh, after the uh, January, uh, the June 2014 tour, correct? Okay, so based on paper one. Yeah, all right, about, about uh, 12 <coughs> plus 8, uh, that's 12 plus 7, somewhere in there. Okay. And so you're asking, you're answering these questions to the best of your ability at the time, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, and it says they were redeployed to Columbus and Marin, that's what you said, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you're asked by Signorelli, uh, you, Signorelli says, okay, you say both of them, and Signorelli says, now, did you make that decision to do that? And what is your answer at line 13? And no. No. And Signorelli then says, who, who makes that decision? And you answer, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Is the answer you gave then the same answer you gave today here in court? Not completely. Not completely? Yes, sir. Did you not testify on direct that you move these officers? Yes, sir. What does that, who does it say move those officers? It says at that time I was informed by Captain Ascalis, who is, well, who's the commander of the emergency squad and motorcycle squad. Okay. So, so, uh, let me the record reflect that he was reading from the statement and not accurately? Just I, I, I'm going to go over it. Let's be clear. <clears throat> Signorelli asks, who makes that who? Who makes that decision? And you answer, at that time I was informed that Captain Askelis, who's the, he was the commander of the emergency squad and motorcycle squad. I guess that was whatever the unit they want to call themselves, special, the special ops captain had reassigned them to down that direction. You see that? Yes, sir. It doesn't say you moved them, correct? No, sir. It says Askelis moved them, correct? Yes, sir. And you went further. You said I was informed that he moved them, correct? And you went further and you said he was in charge of the operation, correct? Yes, sir. Why did you come in here today and say you moved them? Because the first location I was at with them was there, and that's when I was informed to move them. So I moved them. I see. So now it's your testimony that you were informed by Ascalis to move them. Yes, sir. Okay. So earlier when you said you moved them, you made that decision, yet you omitted that Ascalis told you to move them, correct? Maybe. Probably didn't recall at that time. Didn't recall. But now you recall <coughs> the fact that people were moved by Joe Aspelis, the captain in charge of this detail, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And so, to be clear, when you gave that sworn testimony back in January of 2016, you were telling the truth that you had been informed that it was Aspelis, correct? And when you mentioned it earlier, that you did not strike that. When you mentioned, when you testified earlier in the oath that you made the decision to move them, you had forgotten that it was Ashley's who told you to move them, correct? I moved them because I was the last supervisor they saw. So yes. That doesn't, okay. Answer his question. 
Earlier when you testified, right. yes, sir. you had, let's be clear, when you said you moved them, you had forgotten that Ashley said tell you to move them, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, to be clear then, the truth, the truth, as we know it today, is that Joe Ashley's was out there monitoring this and told you to move officers, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. And by the way, who asked all of the questions in this statement up to that point? Statement. Up to that point. That's right. Next question. Who asked the next question? Well, let's read it. Bottom of page eight. Bottom of page eight. Detective Signorelli hears this thing that the captain was moving people around from you, and he says okay. And then the next question is answered by who? Says there, Sergeant Joshua, line 24. Internal affairs for the prosecutor's office then steps in and starts asking questions, correct? Internal Let's write that. Internal affairs for Jersey City Police Department, not the prosecutor's office. The Jersey City Police Department then starts asking questions, correct? Based on this, yes. Based on that or based on what's in front of us and what you recall? What I recall. Okay. So here's the first thing I want to ask. Were you aware? Does this help refresh your recollection that there was an internal affairs investigation also occur, uh, occurring? In Jersey City? Yeah. No. No. Had you heard anything about an internal affairs investigation? No. Okay. Do you remember what the next question was from Sashwood? No. Without the, you don't, right? Now, you had just told them, because on the forum it talked about redeployment of officers, you had just told them that Joe Ascoli's had uh, uh, engineered the, the redeployment of officers, correct? And the next question, do you recall it being about anything to do with Joe Aspelis and his activities on the Skyway detail? And he's in charge. Okay. That's what you told them. Mm -hmm. Do you recall anything else in this statement about asking about Joe Aspelis and him moving people? No, sir. no. In fact, the next question, do you recall what the next question was? No, sir. No. It was, well, we can read it. What was your responsibility when you went around post to post, that's what the, uh, the issue was, correct? That's what the paperwork says. That's what the statement says, yes. correct? So Jersey City Internal Affairs had no interest in learning from a witness who advised that Captain Askelis had been moving people around. They had no interest in learning by, uh, by asking you a follow-up question, correct? Objection, Judge, as to what this um, witness can testify with respect to what Jersey City Internal Affairs intention was. He can ask him certainly what was the next follow-up question, but to ask this witness to testify what was in the mind of Sergeant. I'll withdraw your honor. It's argumentative. I apologize. Let's be clear. Um, you had offered information to them about Joe Aspelis being out there and moving people, and they didn't ask you a follow-up question about that, correct? They didn't ask you, no. And in fact, the questioner changed from Signorelli in the prosecutor's office back to Shashwood in the uh, Internal Affairs Unit, correct? Change. What? All the questions changed. Uh, let, me, let me be clear. All the questions before now were from Signorelli, correct? Right, but this is not a, this is not a Jersey City Internal Affairs investigation. It's what was Jersey Jer City Internal Affairs doing there? Assisting. Assisting? Assisting in what? Whatever investigation they have, they're doing. Who? Who's doing? That's the county prosecutor. Okay, so it's your testimony that there was no internal affairs pending? Right now, all I know is Jersey City. Okay, then what was Sashwood asking you questions about then? If you thought it was just a criminal investigation, why was somebody not in the criminal prosecution office asking you questions? Because I was in a target. What's that? I'm not a target. Okay, so Jersey City was there because you weren't a target? There to help out, like I said before. Help out is what you understood the, his role to be, correct? Assist, yeah, help. Uh, assist. Like when you say something about Ascoli's moving people around and the next question has nothing to do with that, there's no follow-up. Is that what you mean by assist? I don't, like, I don't know what they were thinking of. Yeah. It's not my investigation. By the way, is there any indication in this statement in any way, shape, or form that Mr. Stoma or Mr. Cho were in that uh, room questioning you? No, they weren't. They weren't. Okay. But this is this 
statement took place, right? Yes, it did. Uh, all right. You want to, can we take a break?